Hey guys, I'm Miss Penny Stockpincher and today we will take a look at the investment case of graphene. Possibly the biggest discovery in material research since the invention of plastic. Often referred to as the miracle material, graphene was discovered back in 2004. Since then not much has happened. There are hardly any graphene based products and graphene stocks are all very low valued. In this video we briefly explain what graphene is and how it is applied. In addition, we take a look at why the breakthrough of the graphene industry has not happened yet and why it is soon around the corner. For this, I'll introduce you to the first three out of nine stocks in our graphene series. So if you're up for more graphene stocks like these, follow Miss Penny Stock Pincher. So what is graphene? Graphene consists of only one element and that's carbon. Carbon occurs in many different variations. We know it, for example, as diamond or as pencil lead. Another variation of carbon is graphite. The graphite is made of several layers, so it has a three-dimensional structure. As you can see here, graphite consists of individual carbon elements, which are symbolized here by the honeycomb shapes. These carbon elements are also the basis of graphene. Unlike graphite, however, graphene consists of only one layer. So if you want to convert graphite into graphene, you remove layer after layer from the three-dimensional graphite until only one layer remains. Graphene is therefore a two-dimensional graphite. So the one remaining layer has the thickness of one atom. This means that one layer of graphene is one million times thinner than a human hair and yet 150 times stronger than steel. Due to this very ordered structure, electrons can move quickly in graphene. This results in exceptionally good electrical and thermal conductivity, as well as outstanding durability while remaining absolutely flexible. It is also transparent and weighs very little. These characteristics enable various applications. In medical technology, graphene can be integrated into the nervous system due to its low thickness and then, for example, monitor body values or control prosthesis. Semiconductor technology, meaning microchips, can be built much more compact and with higher computing power. This will multiply the performance of processors and quantum computers. Also, membrane technology can be built with a graphene so that, for instance, desalination plants can be operated cost efficiently and with low energy consumption. There are also almost unlimited applications of graphene as a composite material. Using graphene makes products harder and therefore lighter, as less material needs to be used overall. The iron and cement content in buildings can be reduced by about 30%. Aircraft bodies become much lighter, and the same applies for car bodies. Means of transportation will be more economical to operate due to this weight reduction. Batteries with graphene can be fully charged within seconds. In addition, these batteries have a much higher energy density, so electric cars have a longer range. Besides that, the flexibility of graphene is being used to make screens and control surfaces bendable. But why are there not yet a large number of graphene products? And will they be in the future? Currently, many laboratories can produce graphene in small quantities. A mass product in high quality is still very difficult. The processes are very complex and therefore expensive. For high purities, graphene can exceed even the price of gold. In general, technologies must not only be technically mature, but must also be economically attractive. This is also true for graphene. With such horrendous prices, there can hardly be much demand for graphene. Of course, we would all prefer fast charging batteries, but not if they are more expensive than gold. And of course, we would replace an overhead line consisting of many aluminum cables with a thin graphene line, but not if this line is more expensive than gold. So why do I invest in graphene? The fact that there's hardly any market for graphene at the moment is, in my opinion, not due to the lack of areas of use and possible applications for graphene. At the current prices, it is understandable that there is no real demand. However, if it were possible to produce graphene more cheaply and in large quantities in the future, that would be the game changer. Many companies, as well as universities, are researching different methods to produce graphene more cheaply. The potential applications are simply too promising not to push graphene further. Every new technology starts with high costs until the technology matures further and a price reduction occurs. Think of computers here. In 1970, a computer cost 4.6 million US dollars. Today, computers are 10,000 times cheaper. 
A computer in the 70s was of course not yet considered a mass application at these prices, just like graphene is today. In short, buying the right graphene stocks today could be comparable to investing in Microsoft in 1975. That's why graphene stocks represent about 4% of my total portfolio. Yes, they're risky, but if there's a breakthrough, I definitely want to be invested. Now let's move on to the stocks which are all in the penny range. In this video, I present the first three out of nine graphene stocks. We will check the other six in part two and three. One of the most well-known graphene companies is First Graphene, which produces graphene powder. The Australians claim to be the world leader with their pure graphene process. The capacity of graphene production is said to be 100 tons annually. Here the emphasis is on the word capacity. There is no information about the website about what quantities are actually produced. You may notice that first graphene has been around longer than 2004. That was the year graphene was discovered. The company was called First Graphite until 2006 when it shifted its focus to graphene and adjusted its name. The share price here has fallen a lot since 2007-2008 and has been rising slowly but steadily for the last five years. The valuation seems very cheap with a market capitalization of 83 million euros and a share price of 15 cents, especially when looking at the historical share price values. Applied Graphene Material is a company founded in 2010 by a professor of material science that produces graphene nanoplatelets. These platelets are used, among other things, for material reinforcement and corrosion protection. The platelets are also used as heat conductors, for example, for cooling processors. Furthermore, the nanoplatelets are used in the cathode of batteries. However, applied graphene materials does not build or develop batteries themselves, but only lists batteries as an application for their product. What I like about applied graphene materials is that it owns a patented process for graphene production. The share price has dropped since 2014 and the current market cap is 27 million euros. So applied graphene materials is currently very cheap. A bottoming of the falling price has happened about 10 months ago in April 2020. The third company is Haydel Graphene Industries. The British company, unlike First Graphene and Applied Graphene Materials, has its focus not on the production of graphene, but rather on the integration of graphene in materials and products. Haydale Graphene is another example of how versatile graphene can be used. For example, graphene masks for virus protection. In my eyes, Haydale Graphene has much more potential in its business areas of energy and infrastructure, medical technology and paints and coatings. Haydale has fallen about 95% in the last five years. The share price was 3 cents just under a year ago and has been rising steadily since then. With a current share price of 8 cents and a market cap of 27 million euros, Haydale is still very cheap. What the hydrogen sector was in 2018, graphene stocks may currently be. More specifically, the graphene sector in general has a lot of potential and is very cheaply valued at the moment. In my investments, I focus on the pure producers of graphene, meaning first graphene and applied graphene materials. Haydale as a graphene integrator will not be successful, in my opinion, until the producers of graphene reduce their costs. First graphene looks to me to be the more mature company compared to applied graphene materials, as it already has revenues and can produce larger quantities of graphene at lower cost using the pure graph process. That is why I have a medium position in first graphene and a small one in applied graphene materials.